we were just working out a couple little examples here. I guess we just did one example of, of a particular graph conditioning on a particular set. And we looked at a whole bunch of pairs of, of nodes or pairs of random variables. And we checked to see if they're deseparated. And we found that, you know, just by annotating this graph in a certain way, using these rules, by putting these little stop signs in the, in the appropriate places, we could just immediately, just instantaneously, just by a glance, we could just immediately check whether a pair of random variables was deseparated. And remember, when they're deseparated, that implies that they are conditionally independent, given that, given C, given 3 in this case. But if they're not deseparated, that does not necessarily imply that they are conditionally dependent. So always bear that in mind. I always I'll keep harping on that so you so you never forget it. So let's do another example. Let's do this is this is so so easy and fun. Let's do another one. Let's do let's pick a different random variable to condition on. So let me maybe I'll just Oh, let's redraw it, I guess. So let's redraw this thing here. So we've got... Maybe I'll pause so you don't have to wait while I draw this. Okay, I'll pause and be right back. Okay, we're back, and I finished drawing this graph. And now, so this is the same graph as before. Same graph as before. And let's condition on something else. So let's condition now on, let's say, let's condition on 7. Condition on 7. So C now is, so before we had C was equal to 3, and now we're going to have C equal to 7. And let's see what happens. Let's, let's write out, let's write out a similar chart here. So we're going to consider, we're going to, we're interested in asking the question, is xi conditionally independent of xj given x7 now? So what is the chart? So we've got i, j, and we want to figure out if they are deseparated. So let's see. Is anything conditionally independent given seven? Well, let's see. Let's let's write out the let's use our little rules here that we so we we annotated this graph with these little stop signs. So let's do the same thing. See see what happens. So we put a stop sign before if it was a tail at the conditioned on at any at, in a vertex. So if it was a tail at a vertex that was being conditioned on. So let's do that. Oh, well, there's no, there's none. There's no tails that are at 7. That's the thing we're conditioning on. And we also put a stop sign if it was a head-to-head -head place and the vertex was not being conditioned on and none of its descendants were being conditioned on. So let's see. So where are the head-to-head? -head? So here's a head-to-head. -head. And it's not being conditioned on at 3, but 3 has a descendant, right? 7 is a descendant of 3. And it is being conditioned on, so we can't put a stop sign there. We only write, we only put a stop sign if it's not in C and no descendant is in C. So it's blocked only if if it's not in C and none of its descendants are in C. But here one of the descendants is in C. So we do not so it's not blocked. Okay. What about this one? This is the only other head to head, I guess. And this one, it's the same situation. The descend a descendant of six is in C is in C, so it's not so it's not blocked, so we don't put a stop sign. So there's no stop sign. So every nothing is conditionally independent given seven. Everything is so nothing is conditionally independent given seven. Or give I guess given given x7 to be precise, nothing is conditionally independent, and we could just immediately read that off. No no pair is conditionally independent. I should say no pair. 
Well, that was cool. So let's do let's do another one. Let's do let me redraw this again, and we'll condition on something else. Let's do that again. All right. So I'll pause for a second here. Okay, we're back. So I made a copy of that that same graph once again, and we're going to try something else now. So now let's try changing it. So we had three examples so far. We had one with this same graph, and let's call this maybe A. We had example B, and we worked out we could work out a whole bunch of cases really, really easily. And then we had example B where we conditioned on something else. And then we're going to have example C. I hope I'm not confusing you with this is not the sets A, B, and C. I'm sure that's clear. So this is going to be example C. And let's let's now change things up. Let's instead of instead of just conditioning on something else, let's also change the game and let's ch let's make it a let's let's change the graph to have an edge here from 1 to 5. So this will make things a little more interesting because now we'll have to check more than one path. All right. So we've got that and what should we condition on? Let's condition on let's condition on 3 again. So that's the same as the first example, but now we have this new this new edge here from 1 to 5. So let's see what happens. So we're going to look at pairs i and j and we'll see if they are d separated. And so let's make our let's put in our stop signs here. So for first, let's check head to tail relationships or tail to tail. So we just so we check the tails, and we only have to check the tails at the at the node which is being conditioned on in, conditioned on in this case three. So we need to put stop signs here and here. That's a bit, a bit overkill here and here. And then we need to have at any head-to-head -head relationship if that vertex and no descendants are conditioned on then we put a stop sign between those heads. That's not the case here but it is the case here. Head-to-head -head, C is not conditioned on and none of its descendants are conditioned on. And that those are the only head-to-head -head relationships. So let's see what happens here. So let's look at some pairs, maybe some pairs that will be interesting. Let's look at 2 and two and 5. Are 2 and 5 de-separated given 3? Well, let's see. So 2 and 5, so in order to check if they're de-separated, remember we need to see if every path is blocked. Is every path from 2 to 5 blocked with respect to this condition set? Well, let's see. 2 to 5. So how can we get from 2 to 5? Well, we could either go 2, 3, 4, 6, 5. And that's blocked because it would have to go through both two stop signs. So that's blocked. And we also have to check. There's another path. 2, 3, 1, 5. 2, 3, 1, 5. And is that blocked? No, it's not blocked. So these are not de-separated. But this is... So things have changed here because 2 and 5 before, did we do 2 and 5 before? Yes, we did. We did 2 and 5 before, and they were de-separated because we only had this path, right? We only had the path going through here. Now, we can go back up. And so, you know, even though we're conditioning on 3, we can still pass through it here because this is a head-to-head. -head. Okay. Let's look at another pair. Let's look at 2 and 7. Are 2 and 7 de-separated? So how can we get, we can go 2, 3, 4, 6, uh, so, but that's blocked, so that's, that's to get from 2 to 7. We could also go 2, 1, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so we can do that. So again, these are not de-separated, right? We can go through here, we can go 5, 6, 7, because this stop sign only applies if we're going through the head to head. We're only going from 5, 6 to 4. And let's do, maybe we do a couple more. How about 2 and 4? 2 and 4, 2, we can't go that way. How about 
two, three, one, five, six. Nope, can't go back up to four because we're blocked here. So that is, so that is, yes, right. So it, so it is deseparated in that case because all the paths were blocked. Two, three, and four was blocked, and two, three, one, five, six, four was blocked at six. So it is deseparated then. All the paths are blocked. And let's do seven and eight. So this one might be interesting here. We have seven and eight. Well, let's see. We can't we can't go seven, six, four, three, eight because we're blocked at both of these tails actually here. So that's that would block us. And can we go can we go around seven, six, five, one, three? Uh, right, one, three, eight. We can't get back down to eight because this is blocked. So, all right, I mean, you could just immediately see that since there's a stop sign at eight here, we could, you know, everything would be de separated from eight. So that is also de separated. So I think I I think that um, I hope that this little trick it's it can be very difficult to sort of just you know I mean just sort of remembering these rules is I think the hardest part and I hope that this little trick I think that this is a neat little trick oops using these little these little red stop signs to indicate or to annotate where you can't pass through is a really is a really neat trick to be able to just immediately read off from the graph these these deseparation these deseparation properties and then once you have that then you can you can just well, at least for the ones where it applies, then you know that they are conditionally independent, and so you can apply the theorem. Uh, well, we, you can apply the theorem in order to determine that they are conditionally independent. And of course, you could always do the same, do this, these, this same approach for sets, even though we were just looking at pairs of random variables and we were only conditioning on a single random variable, we could always extend this to to sets and, and do the same exact thing, right? Because these rules, these rules here, these work in the same way for sets. It's just because they're, they're, the rules are applied, the, the, the fact that a particular path is blocked is only concerned with looking at a pair of random variables and looking at them being blocked at a single random variable. So all of this this sort of little technique that we developed using these red dots and all, and, you know, sort of visual annotating it and visualizing it this way, that all works just just as well if we were considering sets of random variables. And the only difference is that you then have to check all the pairs of paths between or all the all the possible paths between all the possible pairs of random variables in the sets A and B that you're thinking that you're that you're checking for deseparation between them. Okay, so so once again I hope this was a useful I hope you found this to be a, a useful trick and hopefully this will help you to apply the deseparation property.